Hey and welcome to another video. Today is a part two of this Chrome-like retro text effect inside Microsoft Word. So this is what we aim for. This is what we got so far from the first part of this tutorial. So what we are missing is this reflection below the text, the background glow, if I can say it like this, then the background grid, the star field, the text above, and of course a tiny bit of noise. I'm not quite sure how visible it is through the video. So let's start with the reflection of the text that should be fairly easy. Inside our document, we will just open the selection pane and locate the right text object, which is the one which with the fill, the only one with the fill, which is this one. I will right click the object and select format shape. And in here I will open text options, text effects, and I'll open reflection. I may choose any of the presets because I will change them anyway. Actually, those values around 54 size and transparency work just fine. I want to raise the blur to be blurred, reflect a blurred reflection, maybe like 11 points or so. So this looks nice. The next thing are those vertical stripes, kind of highlight thing over the text. So in order to draw those, I will insert a new shape being a line and I will draw it with the shift key pressed so I get the horizontal line, then I will change the width to maybe point and half or so, and the line to be gradient line for all the stops being white, like this. And the middle one will have a transparency of maybe 50%, while the one on the right side and one on the left side will have a transparency of 100%, so they will be fully transparent. And as you can see, it's kind of not working. That's because we have the type set to linear, but the angle is 90 degrees. We have to change this to zero degrees, so it's looking the way we want it to look. So this is like a horizontal, sorry, the horizontal highlight kind of light streak. So I'll move it around some bright part of the text like this. And then I will copy paste it and do this multiple times. I'll maybe move it to the top of the text. Maybe I can change the size for a few of those lines as well. As you can see, it's now pretty much related to the text. So if I change the text later on, I may also to reposition some of those light streaks around the text. Also, just because the line is so small, it's sometimes hard to select. So sometimes it's even faster to move the line around the text using the arrow keys on the keyboard instead of just trying to select it with the mouse. So I think I'm pretty happy with all those light streaks. Since I have quite so many objects in the document, I may just select all of those light streaks, group them together and name this, whatever you call it, light streaks. Like this. Okay, I may hide the selection pane just so I have more space to work on. I will zoom out a little bit and I will draw this kind of big shining light circle on the background. So I may use an oval or rectangle, doesn't matter. I will draw it fairly big like this. Then I will set the line to be no line and fill to be gradient fill, this time being a radial, gra a radial gradient, going from maybe like some kind of violet color. This is standard one from, this is this one, the violet color. The second one will be the same, but this time the transparency will be set to 100%. We can get rid of the third stop, but we have to set the direction to be from the middle, like this. I may also resize it just a little bit to be, make it just a little bit bigger and move it to the back, so set to back. And now we can work on the grid itself. Again, I will show the selection pane and probably hide everything so I don't. it's not distracting me or I'm not accidentally selecting anything what I don't want to be selected. I'll keep the zoom level like this and draw a new line. Again, holding the shift key like this. I will change the line to be radiant line with about maybe one point and the grain width will be very same as the background. So the sides will be kind of uh, violet color as well as the middle one and I will just play with the transparency the middle one again will be around 50% while the ones on the top and bottom will be 100% and as you can see it's working just fine I may just adjust this to be 
exactly in the middle by typing the position to be 50%. Then I will copy paste it multiple times. So copy and paste this. This is the second line, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten. When I have 10 different lines, I will select all those lines with the selection tool, select objects tool. Seems like it's not working the way I want it to be just because those are outside of the document. So I may also use a selection pane to select all those lines. Then I will align them to be aligned by the middle part. And what I can do is probably move one of those lines more to the top, more to the right like this again select everything and again align it to be distributed uh, horizontally no vertically i don't really know probably horizontally okay so i have nine uh, ten different lines i will group it together then i will again copy paste it and rotate it by 90 degrees with this rotated icon position it like this so we have a, like a grid in the background i have to make sure that it's really on the background so i'll move it over the oval show the oval show all the text objects and the light streaks and we are getting somewhere the oval is probably too bright so i may adjust those colors to be just a little bit darker like this so I'll adjust both colors doesn't make a much difference okay so what we are still missing is the star field on the background, the text on the top and the noise above everything else. For the star field itself, we will not draw those stars individually, but we will use a star field generator, which is this one. I will post the link in the description. We just have to set few values, which is we want the point stars and the stars. We want we don't want those nebulas, nebulas effect, the green ones and the big sun. So I'll uncheck those click render we only get few stars for a lot of small stars and few big, bigger stars then i will copy this picture and simply paste it into word so I'll say copy uh, control v kind of kind of looks good but i still may change this to be you know on any since this is placed on the first character on the first line and moving with the text so i may click this one and set this to be you know behind the text so i can move this freely and maybe resize it to take up the whole document like this the next thing is text above for this one i'm using a font matilda from dafont.com the nice thing about here is you can type in your custom text like microsoft word and see the preview before i even download this font so again i will create a new text box make it the very same size as the chrome so it will be easier to align i will type in microsoft word change the font to matilda size maybe i don't know 90 or so and as you can see there is a quite a big of spacing in between letters then let's again because the kerning is by default turned off so we have to go to fonts and turn off kerning just so those characters are nicely aligned i will maybe make it just a little bit smaller center aligned i may change the font to some or pink color already used maybe this one and for the text box itself i will set the shape fill and outline to no fill and no outline i will move it closer to the chrome text and i will zoom in a little bit so you can see how it looks like kind of like it so the only part that's missing is this noise effect over the text go to give this uh, this like a dated look and again we will use a noise generator which is i believe this one i will again post the link in the description we can choose the noise opacity what's really nice about this noise generator is we can choose the noise density that sets the spacing between between individual dots so usually when you generate no noise it looks like this you have a each pixel has a very different color but this one is nice just because we can set the spacing between individual dots it uh, gives us interesting result we don't have to care about the opacity that much because we can change the opacity inside uh, microsoft word as well so i will set the spacing maybe to this one 
said that I want this to be transparent texture and dimensions to maybe 300 by 300. Doesn't matter that much because we will tile this texture anyway. I will download this texture. Then I will open it and just drag it, drag it into Microsoft Word. It should be this picture. All I need to do is just copy this into clipboard, hide the picture. If I can do it. Okay, not. Oh, I cannot hide a picture just because it's not, it's in line. So I have to switch this to a different text dropping. Then I can hide it. I will zoom out and I will insert a new shape being a rectangle, which will be f like a full screen rectangle. Set the line to no line and fill to be picture or texture fill. I will click, I want to use a picture from clipboard. And you can see immediately we have this noise texture from clipboard, but we want this to be tiled. So I will set, select tile picture as texture. Sorry, tile picture as texture, yes. And you get a really subtle noise over the picture. It also depends on those, you know, the magnification which we are looking at. So I may adjust the transparency of this picture around maybe 50 or 60. So just this is a very subtle effect. Then I will zoom out for the last time and make sure that the rectangle is really taking full screen. And I guess that we are done with the effect. So we have this chrome like text effect with a grid on the background, the start field, the noise, some text above and a lot of different outlines and light streaks. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching.